William Andrews is our next speaker. Dr. Andrews is the president and CEO of Sierra Sciences, a biotech company focused solely on reversing aging through telomere maintenance. Dr. Andrews earned his PhD in molecular and population genetics at the University of Georgia in 1981. He was a senior scientist at Armos Corporation and Codon Corporation, director of molecular biology at Codon and at Geron Corporation, and director of technology and development at EOS Biosciences. He is one of the principal discoverers of both the RNA and protein components of human telomerase. 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 I thought there was a Q&A for him, but no, for Stuart? At the end. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you, Stuart, for first uh, pointing out that PhDs are good for something. Uh, <laughs> But I, I do want to point out, because I'm a PhD too, we, we are here to support you all, okay? And so the purpose of my talk today is to pretty much help you know what to say to your patients when they start asking you about telomeres and how terrified they are because their telomeres might be short or something like that. Because there's a lot of misconceptions, mis misunderstandings about what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> but let me start off with, oh, and first I want to thank Kirsten and Natalie and everybody else. I also want to thank Brittany Schneider over here for turning my slides into a supercharged slideshow. If anybody wants to supercharge their slides, I recommend you talk to her. Uh, and she lives in this area too. All right, so let me start off with first just introducing myself a little bit more. As I said, I am a PhD. I'm a medical researcher who's focusing on telomere biology. So I'm a telomere biologist. I've been in the biotech industry for 35 years. Um, initially, because a lot of things about theories on aging didn't make sense in the beginning, uh, I focused on heart, cancer, heart disease, and inflammation. And through this research and the subsequent research, I'm now on 50 plus US issued patents, which is unusual for a biologist. Chemists usually have that many, but it's pretty unusual. But I've been involved in a lot of things that I'll show you next. I was awarded second place for uh, National Inventor of the Year. That was for the research that I did on telomeres uh, at the very beginning, discovering the enzyme telomerase. And I am presently, if you want to learn more, I'm presently featured in a movie called The Immortalist, uh, which is available on iTunes. I'm also uh, author of a Netflix, sorry, and a lot of other things too. Uh, <clears throat> and you'll see that uh, I also have a book called Curing Aging for anybody that wants to learn more. There's, in the movie, there's about a three minute section that I do a really good job of explaining everything about telomere biology. Uh, and I'm also an ultra marathon runner. Uh, I, I believe in endurance sports is one of the best things you can do to extend your lifespan and health span. And I'll talk about that a little bit more too. Let me just say in my career, I've actually been involved in a lot of different things before I really got into aging. Um, I've been in the biotech industry since it practically began. And I was one of the key people, that, uh, key inventors of human growth hormone, renin, tissue plasminogen activator, erythropoietin, thrombomodulin, osteoinductive factor, beta seron, the first drug ever for treating MS, and now telomerase. Um, I was, my career has been in the situation where teams of other scientists have usually failed at trying to get some of these things done and then I was called in and, and got it done in very short order. So I've been historically somebody that's no, been known to actually make some of these things happen. So keep an eye on what I do. Um, today, well let me first say that because of time I'm not going to be able to go through everything. I could spend hours talking about telomere biology but uh, if people want to see more on me talk on some of these subjects uh, I do have business cards up here. You can get them from Brittany over here. And my website will take you to a lot of uh, videos where one, sometimes I just talk about cancer, sometimes I talk just about heart disease, sometimes this or that. But, but th today I'm just going to give a brief overview of a lot of different things. So the topics are telomeres as a biomarker. These, these are things your patients are going to come and ask you about. They're going to hear about telomeres and they're going to, and I'm, I'm going to assume there's a few people in here that are really new to this field because telomere biology is a brand new field of, of, of medicine. But telomeres is a biomarker, how to protect your telomeres, and then how to lengthen them. And before I go to that, 
I just want to make, go through what the basics of telomere biology is all about. And to do that, <clears throat> in order to, first, what is a telomere? We need to zoom in on a human being. We find that a human is made up of 100 trillion cells. And every one of these cells, most of the theories on why we age say that these, we age because these cells age. And so this is where, in my research, I focus most of my attention on trying to figure out how to slow down, stop, or reverse the aging process in human cells, even in a Petri dish. We've got to zoom in further. And uh, we can see that every, uh, nucle or, yeah, every cell contains a nucleus. And inside these nuclei are found, uh, there's this extra flash occurring in my videos, but uh, <clears throat> every, every cell contains a nucleus with the chromosomes. And the chromosomes here are made up of two arms, as you well know. Uh, the DNA extends from one arm, one end of one arm all the way to the other. And I want you to think of it like a giant shoelace. The, uh, and the thing about the caps on your shoelaces are things that protect your shoelaces from degradation. Well, the caps on our DNA are called telomeres. And they're just like the caps on our shoelaces. And they, as I showed you, they get shorter and frayed as we get older, just like your shoelaces do and we've got to prevent that. Let's zoom in now on the telomere, and we find that the telomere is about 15,000 bases when we're first conceived. Now, <clears throat> the uh, chromosome's about 100 million bases in length, but the telomeres are only about 15,000 bases in length, so they're actually fairly small to begin with, but at least they, they're long enough to protect the ends of the chromosomes, like the caps on your shoelaces do. But here's where all the problems begin. Every time your cells divide, the telomeres get a little bit shorter. And it's not because something's chewing them away. That, that happens too, but that's not the major pro reason why we have telomere shortening. They shorten because our cells lack the ability to duplicate the very end of the chromosome when the cell replicates. So as a result, every time a cell divides, and has to make a new copy of the DNA, the new DNA is a little bit shorter. So there's a lot of cell division that occurs from the time you're conceived to being a newborn baby, and as a result, your telomeres are shortened from 15,000 bases down to 10,000 bases. That's still okay, because they're still long enough to protect your chromosomes. But the problem doesn't end there, because you still have a lot of cell division to go as you grow up. And as you have more and more cell division, you get older and older, your telomeres get shorter and shorter. When they get down to 5,000 bases, your cells lose the ability to function, and that's when you die of old age. Every study that's ever looked at at human cells growing in a Petri dish, whether it's in vitro or whether it's tissues taken off the body at various locations and looked at, when the telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our cells go into a phase called senescence, also called the Hayflick limit. And we, we lose the ability to, our cells lose the ability to function anymore. Now, Joe Perita yesterday said that um, telomere shortening, or the Hayflick limit is caused by oxidative stress. That's actually true in mice, but not true in humans. Uh, we definitely have different ways of aging and stuff like that between mice and humans. The telomeres in humans, when we get the telomeres really, really short and we use an inducible promoter to relengthen them, they all come back again. And they wouldn't do that if it was oxidative stress, and they don't in the case of mice when we do this. So in the case of humans, our Hayflick limit is caused by the Hayflick limit, by the telomeres getting short. Now let me go over this again. We're conceived at 15,000 bases, we're born at 10,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this yet. So no matter how well you eat or exercise or do everything, or let's say your patients do everything you tell them to do, they are still gonna have telomere shortening. You can slow it down a bit by leading a healthy lifestyle, but you can't do anything about it. This is the only clock of aging ever discovered in humans. And I'll tell you, this clock has only been discovered in humans, other primates, mice, uh, not mice, uh, uh, dogs, cats, horses, sheep, pig, and deer. All the other animals, including all the rodents, do not have this issue. They die from oxidative stress and mitochondria dysfunction. Okay, so <clears throat> what's interesting is that now, 
In the scientifically peer-reviewed journals, if you go to PubMed, you'll find that there practically isn't a disease you've heard of that hasn't been connected to the length of your telomeres. Some of them are just correlations, cause and effect haven't been determined, but a lot of these things, such as idiopathic pulmonary uh, fibrosis and dyscarotrosis congenita and, and a few other things have been shown to actually be caused by the short telomeres. So short telomeres do play a significant role in human health. This is mostly still at the research level. A uh, few clinical studies have been done, but uh, it's, the research is looking pretty promising, like this is, this is something to really expect to be big time in the future. So. <clears throat> Here's the, again, the topics that I want to talk about when your patients come to you. These are the things that uh, they're going to ask you about, and, and I want to give you some kind of idea on how to respond. Let's focus first on telomeres as a biomarker. Well, the patients are going to come to you and say, I have to get my telomere lengths measured. And <clears throat> this, is, this is something that, uh, you know, may be better than reading the lifeline on the palm of your hand. Um, but it's, it is over-exaggerated a lot. Now, I'm a research scientist. I'm not trying to market anything. I'm going to just tell you the facts that telomere, that telomere length measurement is something promising in the future, but very little of it is really useful at the moment. Um, but this is what you'd like to see when you take a bunch of people and measure their telomeres and plot them against their age. You want to see a fairly straight line. And, you know, I, I find it really next to impossible to find any publications that actually show something like this. Most of them look like this, which means there's not very much correlation. It's not because the telomeres are a bad biomarker for aging. It's because the techniques for measuring telomere length right now are not very good. They're very inaccurate. In addition, we also have, like if we take a hundred different cells of your body, you're going to find out all hundred of them have different lengths. And so you actually get a smear of different lengths, and it's like, what length do you go with? And so most of the techniques will look at the average telomere length because of this broad distribution. But because it looks more like somebody just took a machine gun and shot a target at random than an actual plot, and surprised they can get actual line out of that, this makes, it, makes telomere length measurement pretty much good for looking at large population studies. So if you want to, there's some studies you can find in the press, in the publications, where they looked at 100,000 people, and we're able to come up with that it correlates with something like they're taking, some cholesterol medication or blood pressure medication or something like that. They'll find out that people taking the medication will have longer telomeres than the, that don't. But as I showed you, look, if you look at the individuals, you'll see that machine gun uh, target sheet instead of an actual straight line. So it's not really good for the individuals. At least not yet. And believe me, there's a lot of research in, in my labs and stuff like that focusing on how to, how to improve this technique. We know what the problems are. We, it's just how to fix them. Now, I will say that there are some, uh, there was, let's say there's six different protocols right now that exist out there. And so if, you, if some patient comes to you and says they really have to have their telomere lengths measured, um, uh, there's six different types of tests, tests you can do. And I'll be honest with you, <clears throat> if you really want to make them feel good, have them tested several times. Because every single time they get tested, they're going to get a different answer. And one of them is going to be really good, and they're going to take that home, and they're going to tell all their friends they have long telomeres. But they're going to also see, sometimes they're going to be told they have short telomeres. Now, one, this is mostly with looking at the average telomere length. Now, what's significant is that we now know that it's not the average telomere length that's important. As I said before, when telomeres start to get short, they still protect the chromosomes. It's when they get critically short, down to like 5,000 bases, that's when you start having all the trouble. So you don't want to be looking at average telomere length, because you could have a low average telomere length, but have no short telomeres. Or sometimes you could have long telomeres and have a lot of short telomeres, because there's such a distribution in the thing. So it turns out what you want to be looking at is the uh, abundance or the frequency or the percentage of telomeres that are critically short. That is the best thing to be looking at so far, and things will get better soon. Okay, but right now, that is the best thing to be looking at. So don't bother wasting your time, patient's time or your time, measuring the average telomere length. You want to look at the percent of telomeres that are critically short. On this list, there's only two, two different procedures that would do this. 
So when you start looking for a place to get patients' telomere lengths measured, ask them if they are going to give you the result of the percent of telomeres that are short. And I'll tell you right now, there's only one commercial place that does this so far. Uh, and I wish I could tell you who it is, but we're not allowed to be talking about commercial organizations here. Oh, okay, so Life Length. So that's okay? Okay, so, so the company is called Life Length. They're actually in Spain. If you go to www.lifelength.com, all one word, uh, you can get them. They actually have a lab in the United States so that the samples can be prepared before shipping to Spain. And that lab is here in South Florida. It's called AML Diagnostics. Okay, so that is the place. If you want to get your patient's telomere length measured and get something that means something, that's where to go. And I have no financial interest in telling you that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so next, let's go to how to protect your telomeres. Okay, so how do we keep them long as long as possible? How do we decrease the rate of their shortening? And I want to say that the handout you have is clinical studies on this because this is where most of the clinical studies on telomeres has been and how to protect your telomeres. Uh, and I printed it out instead of including it in my presentation because of the lack of time. But you have a lot of there. I spend like an hour just talking about those things in that study. But you can see the references. Also, get my business card from Brittany, as I said before, and you can contact me with any particular questions. I do make it a high priority to address any questions that doctors have. But let me just summarize them in a, in a few in this one slide or a bunch of clicks on the slide. Um, <clears throat> exercise, I believe, at least endurance exercise, is the number one most important thing you can do to keep your telomeres long. You'll find that I've shown about five different clinical studies that have been done on this, and in all cases, the longer, the more time you spend doing endurance exercise, the longer your telomeres. <clears throat> and this is important that you, because we all know that if you really push yourself a lot, you're going to increase free radicals and actually accelerate your aging process. <clears throat> but it turns out that's really only true if you're one of those like marathon runners that push yourselves to your sick and throwing up and are crossing the finish line on your hands and knees. You got to keep it fun. You got to, you got to think of like endurance sports, running, swimming, bicycling, everything as something fun to do. And the more often you do it and don't push yourself to being sick, this is actually helping you. Unlike mice, studies have now shown that when uh, humans exercise endurance a lot, they actually boost their antioxidant levels to overwhelm the free radicals that are produced. As a result, the net ex oxidative stress on somebody that re exercises regularly is less. And surprisingly, this includes, most importantly, the ultra-marathon runners, which, as I said, I'm am. <clears throat> and I was always surprised when I first got in the sport how many 80-year-olds there are out running these 100-mile races and, and not looking like they're older than a teenager at all. In fact, when I ran my first 100-mile race, I was, <clears throat> let's say, uh, babysitted by a 75-year-old <laughs> that when we got to 95 miles, she said, okay, you're on your own now. And she took off and beat me by about five minutes. <clears throat> Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's incredible, but, but I'm glad to see now that there's actually data from telomere studies supporting that the endurance exercise is actually good for humans. Put a mouse on a treadmill, you're going you're gonna to shorten its lifespan. And so, does, whatever I'm saying don't, isn't going to help your, you with your pet mice. Uh, antioxidants, omega-3s, and vitamin D are all supplements that have been published in scientifically peer-reviewed journals, and they're shown here in your uh, handout that people who take the right amounts of these for a long period of time do have longer telomeres than those that don't. Smoking causes accelerated telomere shortening. Obesity does too. Uh, <clears throat> stress causes um, a lot of uh, accelerated telomere shortening, so find ways to reduce stress. There's actually papers showing that people that meditate have longer telomeres than people that don't. Depression does too. And surprisingly, so does pessimism. There's two studies out, I've shown one of them here, where people that are pessimistic have been shown to have uh, uh, shorter telomeres than optimistic people. Um, there, I don't know if we can really say cause and effect here. That might be because of other factors. Things that make them pessimistic might be that they already know they have some major uh, gene in their family that's causing them to age faster, stuff like that. But, but it is, there is statistics now that's showing that uh, if you're pessimistic, you have actually shorter telomeres than your friends that are optimistic. So <clears throat> these are things you can do now. 
I want to focus first on these three that, um, that uh, is most easily for you to do something about. Um, I have contacted the authors of these papers and find out, okay, so what is your paper? How does that translate into what a doctor should tell? And this is what I came up with, that omega-3s, you want to give your patients, recommend your patients take 1.4 grams of EPA and 1 gram of DHA per day. That's a lot more than normally that people take. <clears throat> uh, with antioxidants, actually, <laughs> there was no numbers I could give because it's just like there is such a thing as too much. So you just take what's on the bottle because you don't want your antioxidants to become pro-oxidants. But uh, the keeping, doing, doing antioxidants on a regular level will help decrease the rate that uh, your telomeres shorten. Uh, the other thing, vitamin D, you want to take a lot of that, uh, five to 10,000 IUs per day. Uh, the goal is to get your blood levels at 60 to 100 nanograms per mil. And when you get that at that high, then you're doing probably the optimum for keeping telomeres as long as possible. And so it's a combination of oxidative stress and inflammation. And so some of these things are reducing inflammation and some are reducing oxidative stress because both those are known to accelerate telomere shortening. So <clears throat> that's, that's all I have to say on how to protect telomeres today, uh, except for during the Q&A if anybody has any questions. Uh, next, I want to go to how to lengthen telomeres because I think this is the most exciting thing and advanced accidentally. Um, so how to lengthen your telomeres. This all comes from the original discoveries a long time ago. Well, we've known that telomeres shorten when cells divide since the 1970s. And then it was shortly afterwards discovered that this actually does not happen in our reproductive cells. Our reproductive cells are the only cells in the human body that don't have telomere shortening when the cells divide. And this is really important because if they did, then our children will be born with shorter telomeres than we have. Their kids will be born with shorter telomeres than they have, on and on. And we'd be extinct as a species just after a few generations. So in order for us to survive as a species, now, first question is, why do we, sh why do we have telomere shortening at all? And that's a whole other subject that I can spend an hour on. But look, for this topic, let's say that <clears throat> uh, we need to keep them long in our reproductive cells. And so what is doing that? So, I led the research to discover this enzyme telomerase back in the mid-1990s. And this is what our reproductive cells <clears throat> have that keep their telomeres from shortening. This green thing is the DNA shown as a double helix. Uh, telomerase is the factory looking thing. It binds to the tip of the chromosome and it lengthens the telomeres. So when the telomeres get short from cell division, telomerase comes in and just re-lengthens them. And I'll tell you right now, in the test tube and actually in some animal studies now, we have shown that when we produce even more telomerase than our reproductive cells have, the telomeres actually start to get longer. And now there's videos of me explaining why the telomeres are shortening and how telomerase works. If you go to the website, you can see those, and, and, or you can contact me and I can give you more information, or read the book or whatever. But, they're, they're, but the t that's what telomerase does, is it lengthens the telomeres after the telomeres get a little bit shorter. Um, so what can you do right now, because this is a brand new field of science, um, there's very little you can do so far to lengthen the telomeres in your patients, but there are a few things that, that have come up. Uh, natural products, there's some natural products that are now on the market that are available, and there's synthetic products. And if you want to find out which ones actually work and which ones don't, because there's a the field of anti-aging is filled with more quacks and charlatans than any field ever. Uh, and that's been forever and ever that's, that's been going on. But, but there's a lot of companies out there promoting telomerase activators or inducers that really don't work at all. Okay, so see me about it because unless, unless I get the okay to... Okay, so the natural products that you probably want to take are TA65 and product B. They're the only ones that have been tested in my lab that actually do cause telomerase to get produced. A lot of the other ones are just going off of literature where they thought they had something to induce telomerase, but they couldn't reproduce it, and so they've mixed these things in anyway. TA65, T, so T is in Tom, A is in Apple, dash the number 65. That's the very first one that's come out, and I'll show a clinical study here of it in a minute. That's, that's actually the only one that has any clinical studies. And then... Uh, uh, 
uh, product B that's sold is P R O D U C T, then the letter B, and it's sold by a company called Isogenics. TA65 is sold by two companies. One is called uh, TA Sciences, and the other one's called Jeunesse, and I don't know how to spell it, but the product is called Finity. So, like, look, think about Infinity, but it's Finity, and plus the last letter is an I instead of a Y. So, F I N I T I. Those, those products have been shown in my lab to actually uh, induce telomerase. Now, there's no point in inducing telomerase unless it actually is enough to actually do something to the telomeres. And so, so let's focus on natural products first. This is a clinical study that I'm actually an author on. And I, I led the, actually the research that's in this study here. This is where, even though TA65 and product B are too weak to lengthen the average telomere lengths. It turns out the shortest telomeres actually can be lengthened easier. And as I said before, the shortest telomeres are what's really important. So in this study, we used the life length test to, sh to look at the shortest telomeres, and we found out in 10 out of 12 people in the study, 10 of them saw that their number of short telomeres got reduced. Okay, which means they got lengthened. Okay, it's really hard to measure lengthening in short telomeres, but you can measure the number that are, that are short before and afterwards. The only two that didn't show the, the um, decrease in short telomeres were the two youngest people, number five and seven in the study, <clears throat> that uh, 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 were so young they didn't have enough short telomeres to measure to begin with. So that was pretty exciting. It was, it was good to see that they were the only ones. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time usually going over this data, but you have it uh, in your, in your um, flash drive, so if you want to look at this in more detail. But this is a study showing that TA65 actually does increase the length of the shortest telomeres. And in that same paper, I also showed data showing that when we add it to human cells in a Petri dish, we do see that TA65 does cause low levels of telomerase to be produced when the untreated cells show no sign of telomerase. Um, <clears throat> in that same study, there was also some, the other people involved in the study did, looked at some other markers. They saw that CD8 20, tw CD28 negative T cells <clears throat> decreased, naive T cells increased. All these are reversal of what we see when people get older. Uh, we saw natural killer cells go down, blood pressure go down, skin elasticity go up, bone density go up, cholesterol go down, and homocysteine go down. I mean, this is a good indication that it's working. It doesn't mean it's going to reverse aging, as I'll come back to in a minute. It's just, it's just saying that it is producing a little bit of telomerase in cells that are probably slowing down the average telomere length of decreasing, but it's increasing the sh length of the shortest telomeres a little bit. So I, I always say a little bit of telomerase is better than no telomerase. And so, so this is, is working. Now, uh, the other product B, they don't have any clinical studies yet, but uh, <clears throat> they, they should shortly. Um, synthetic products. <clears throat> now, synthetic products, and let, me, let me just make a comment. <laughs> a lot of people are opposed to synthetic products. I'm, I'm actually one of the few labs that work with both natural products and th synthetic products. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend synthetic products here for a minute because we, we do toxicity assays in just about everything. We've tested over 300,000 different synthetic products. We've tested over 10,000 natural products in our both in, uh, efficacy assays and our toxicity assays. And we have found that natural products, in a lot of cases, a lot of ones you use are very toxic, okay, to human cells growing in a Petri dish. Um, <clears throat> now, that, that doesn't mean that they're so toxic they're making people sick, but it, it is going to, uh, natural products do cause some people to get sick. The reason why synthetic products get such a bad rap is, the, synthetic, I mean talking about pharmaceuticals, is because when somebody gets a side effect from a pharmaceutical, the doctor, since they prescribed it, they have to report it. And in the case of uh, uh, natural products, the doctor just says, quit taking it. But so, so you don't really get the results. So I just want to say, there isn't a chemical on the planet that, that somebody isn't sensitive to. So this is, now synthetic products do require uh, FDA approval, or at least in particular countries, other regulatory agencies. This is a skin cream now that's been approved 
uh, in New Zealand and Australia and South Korea. Uh, and, and they did clinical studies, about four years of clinical studies, with a lab in Italy called Abbott's Laboratories. And they saw some pretty remarkable results. I'm just going to go through these because I'm already getting the sign that I'm speaking too long. Uh, <clears throat> and you have this on the memory stick. Um, and, uh, and actually, the clinical study is online at that website on the bottom left, www.tam818.com. Uh, okay, that's called, there's two of them called One Truth 818. So One Truth 818, that's in uh, New Zealand and Australia. In South Korea, Japan, uh, China, it's called Defy Time. All one word, Defy Time. And if you go to www.defytime.science, you can see more about that there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I want to say that in our studies and compared to published literature and stuff like that, the synthetic products are about 80 to 300 times more potent than the natural products. So the, the advantage of synthetic products is us as scientists and medicinal chemists can modify them to make them better. You can't do that with a natural product because if you do, it's not a natural product anymore. <clears throat> okay, so uh, now nothing yet is potent enough. Even this synthetic product is still about eightfold lower than we think is needed to reverse or even stop aging. So nothing is available enough to, to actually make telomeres longer. And I want to go through this. I know I've only got five minutes, but this is a question. People ask, well, shoot, I'm taking TA65, I'm taking product B, but LifeLink says my telomeres are still getting shorter. My average ones are. And <clears throat> so I want to explain what's going on here, because that is true. None of these things are long, uh, strong enough to raise the length of the average telomeres. I want you to think of telomere shortening as a tug of war, or telomere biology as a tug of war. You've got your shorteners, pulling one way, and you got your lengtheners pulling the other way. Okay, now in 99% of our cells, we only have shorteners. We don't have anything lengthening in it. The only cells that do is our reproductive cells. But in all the other cells, the shorteners are constantly pulling to shorten our telomeres. Now if you do the things that I mentioned before to protect your telomeres, all you do is you reduce the number of people here that are, are uh, shortening them. So they, sh they shorten at a slower rate as a result. Now, <clears throat> As I mentioned, TA65 product B now adds lengtheners. But as you can see, they're just adding a few. Okay, so the, so the shorteners are still winning. Okay, even because you've got lengthening, shortening, lengthening, short. Cell divides that get shorter, lengtheners come in and lengthen. Cell divides, shortens, cell, uh, uh, telomerase comes in and lengthens. So, unfortunately, in the telomerase inducers we have, the lengtheners can't win they're still less potent than the shortener. So, the, so in this case, the telomeres still get shorter. So TA65 and product B, still, you still get telomeres shortening, except for the shortest ones, even in the presence of weak levels of telomeres. Now, if we add more lengtheners, we could actually uh, stop this shortening. That would be the stopping of aging, if all the theories are right about uh, telomere length and aging. But this doesn't exist yet. Contrary to everything you've ever heard, there is nothing on the planet that's ever been discovered, except for some gene therapy tricks, nothing on the planet that actually will uh, stop your telomere shortening. You can only decrease the rate of shortening. The gene therapy things that I mentioned, they're not, they're, a lot of them are not very good they, because they actually give you severe side effects. So they're not really available yet. Eventually, we want to add even more people to the lengthener side, and that will actually uh, cause reversal of aging. Telomeres will get longer. If, if everything correlates to the animal studies and the pe human cells and petri dishes studies, it absolutely will reverse human aging and make us feel younger, look younger, healthier, everything. And, and keep in mind, nobody wants to just make un old, unhealthy people. We want to make old, healthy people. Okay, this doesn't exist yet, but check back in a year. I think we're about one year away from having something that will be potent enough to actually reverse human aging, or at least lengthen telomeres, and then we can see if it reverses aging. I'd like to spend a few minutes just talking about telomerase and cancer. I've only got two slides on this, because this is something you're going to hear from your patients. They're going to say, hey, does telomerase cause cancer? Because there is rumors out there that telomerase cause cancer. But it's actually, there's not any clinical data showing this at all. And there's very little uh, preclinical data, or let's say, uh, in vitro data suggesting it. Uh, I want to just show, I, I can spend an hour on this, you can go to videos and see a more thorough talk on the cancer, but I can tell you the bottom line is 
for every study that's ever been published, and none has been published in the last, since 1995, for every study that suggests that, that, suggests that telomerase might cause cancer, there are 100 studies now that show that the lack of telomerase does cause cancer. Okay, so you want to keep, let me do question and answer so they get done. So that is, that is something that people seem to forget. They say, yeah, there's these theories about why telomerase would cause cancer, but they ignore the fact that lack of telomerase has really good reasons to be causing cancer. So you want to be doing whatever you can to keep the telomerase levels high and an increase your telomere lengths. So to learn more, there's my book called Curing Aging. There's also this movie called The Immortalist, available on iTunes and Netflix, and questions. Do I have time for questions? Okay, good. I, I, we had agreed before that I was going to do it if I, if I didn't go over time. Okay, so, so, so Helmut, you had a question. Uh, wouldn't it be uh, uh, obvious uh, if uh, telomere length would uh, cause cancer that young people would then Yeah, have now there's a lot of logic issues that you can do to show that it doesn't make any sense. But there are a few people that I would say don't read the literature, just have heard rumors in the past and spread this and, and it's causing a lot of people to believe that telomerase does cause cancer. I do want to say, since most of you are stem cell people, one of the big problems in the stem cell field, and I'm hoping to be the solution to, is that stem cells do have shorter telomeres than you would like. And especially when you take them out and culture them at all, the telomeres get shorter. And when you put them back into the people, they're actually older than the person, even though that they're that person's own cells. So I'm hoping that we can have something that will help that problem. This is one of the reasons why older people, you don't see it work well, but we can we can lengthen them and uh, make it so the stem cells are far more efficient in the future, as soon as we have a telomerase inducer. Next question. Yes. It seems to me that I recall that cancers, some form of cancer is actually kind of turned back into a stem cell and that it doesn't uh, uh, obey the usual rules of stopping growth when it's supposed to and uh, you know, touch with another cell and well, I, I can tell you this much. Okay, so I was a cancer researcher for many, many years. I've got actually things that are in clinical studies right now. I know a lot about cancer, and there's a misunderstanding by a lot of people on exactly what cancer is. Cancer is lack of growth control. When a cell loses the ability to, be, to respond to the things that tell it not to grow, then that actually becomes a cancer. <clears throat> When it becomes immortal, that just becomes an immortal cancer. Okay, and that's when you start getting your metastasis and, and the cancer spreading and, and becoming a lot bigger than, than it would normally be. Um, but the, uh, uh, if I remember what your question was, uh, what, say it again? What would you? Well, about it. Okay, so, so, so any cell, <clears throat> that's right, any cell is going to benefit from turning telomerase on. Okay, so cancer cells, because the short telomeres, okay, all cancer cells have short telomeres. Because of the short telomeres, this induces a lot of chromosome rearrangements and mutations. Just like when the caps on your shoelaces get short, your shoelace starts falling apart, so does your chromosome. That increases, all these mutations cause the increased chances of your cells to find a few that survive whatever you treat them with. So, <clears throat> so one of the mutations that will occur in a cancer cell is that they'll eventually turn on telomerase. And we know that's always a later event after the cells have already become cancer because all cancers already have short telomeres. So it happens when the telomeres get short. We want to keep them long. But cancer cells do turn on telomerase and then as a result survive. That's why we would never ever want to prescribe a drug that just turns on telomerase in cancer cells. We want to have them turned on in all of our cells, especially our immune cells, because one of the major causes of cancer is a weakened immune system. We want to keep, we want to keep the telomeres, and that's due to short telomeres. It's called immune senescence by short telomeres. We want to keep the immune cells. There's a question over here. I don't think the microphone's turned on. Um, and immortalized cells from allergenic patients? Would it, are you talking like probiosis? Uh, when, you, when you say allergenic, okay, you're talking about? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, if you can concentrate the, the immortalized cells in a younger patient. Well, there aren't any immortalized cells in a younger patient. But, but you can take stem cells from a young person 
and put them into an older person. Okay. And that's, that's one thing. So you know, the number one reason why you treat people with stem cells, it's a, just another way to provide your body with cells that have long telomeres. That's all. Okay? My mission is to find a way to lengthen the telomeres in the cells you already have. Okay, question over here. Um, I thought I understood you to imply that in older individuals, because their telomeres are shorter, the stem cell would be less effective. It's That's correct. Does the room generally agree that older individuals do not respond as well to stem cell therapy in terms of the observations? Anybody do enough patients to look at? Helmet, you were saying this this morning. Well, I would say that, uh, you know, the older the uh, person is, the shorter the telomeres are in those stem cells. And therefore, the uh, stem cells would be less effective. That's what we typically see. Uh, younger people have longer telomeres. Their cells are much more potent. We see that when we would uh, start a culture, let's say, from uh, Wharton's jelly or so, like a very young cell, basically, uh, to do uh, a mesenchymal uh, culture with that, they would be very, very potent cells, meaning that cells gives a good signal to the DNA what to do. When that, weak, that signal starts to weaken and weaken and weaken as we age, there may be mutations happening because the communication is not from the telomeres to instruct there anymore or becomes more and more poor and therefore the cell doesn't, uh, it behaves older. If you lengthen the telomeres again, I would understand it as the cell starts to behave younger. Yeah. Uh, there are some studies, some my studies, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that to show us what that has done by lengthening telomeres in mice. Oh my, uh, well, okay. Mice don't really age like by telomere shortening, so it's really not fair to be looking at mice. The only mice that actually work are the engineered mice out of Harvard, where they totally abolish the aging system, or the aging system that normally occurs in mice and replace it with the human system. And those are the studies that have been showing that lengthening telomeres in mice extend lifespan. But I don't think they've done uh, uh, particular stem cells there. But uh, there was something, oh yeah, the, I, there, Two doctors in the area that I work with a lot, that's Joe Parita, who spoke yesterday, and Dr. Dipnarine Maharaj. Uh, and if you know them, you can talk to them too about how they believe that short, older people have a problem. A question over here. It's back there first. I, I want to quote Ronald Reagan and, and his uh, debate about, don't want to talk about youth and inexperience being a, a bad thing. I think it's very dangerous to to talk about stem cells generically. We do patients that are well into their 90s utilizing regenerative cells from fat and, and other tissues, um, and they work quite well for those particular clinical applications that we're talking about. So a specific application where a young stem cell needs to have a function that will then last in that patient for a long period of time, I would agree that the telomeres would be important. But for a, an aging patient where you want to reduce over a short period of time inflammation or you have an infected wound and the defensins that regenerative cells from fat have, that I don't care about the telomere length in that particular application and I, 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 I don't want us to give our patients the idea that once they hit 50, we're not going to be able to utilize these cells. And that's something that does get thrown out there at times that if you're going to do it, you better do it before you're 50. Yeah, my comment that research in progress, okay? There's, we're not going to really know the answers to these questions until we actually have a telomerase inducer strong enough to prove or disprove the theories to be correct. But I will tell you that there, there's a lot of variation in particular ages of where some old people do still have long telomeres. I do get complaints from a lot of doctors that they can't get the stem cells to work at all in their older patients, but then others will say that they do work. Why? Okay, some people also say that stem cells really aren't colonized in the body. It's, they're just releasing cytokines. So maybe the, the cytokines that are from the older people are sufficient enough because maybe their telomeres are a little bit longer. But there's, we won't know. There's, there is two sides to every story right now. I'm leaning towards the idea that whatever you do with your stem cells, they're going to be better if we lengthen their telomeres. Over here. There's, let's, this guy's had his hand up for a while, so we've got to give him the microphone next. Oh, why don't you go ahead? If I were to take TA65 and product C, what sort of clinical differences would I notice? Well, there's no clinical studies on product B. Okay? And uh, 
I really don't want to get into which one's better kind of things when they both work. <clears throat> um, I will tell you this much, I take both. Okay? I believe there's synergy. To look at the shortest telomeres. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, so the, the things that people are seeing uh, are the things that I saw, and I showed you a clinical list of clinical studies, but the, uh, what is it, the, the hearsay kind of stuff that you see here. People are saying their age spots are dif disappearing on their hands. You can look at my hands. I've had the same thing. Uh, vision is getting better. Uh, endurance is actually getting better. Uh, that's probably the number one thing people are saying. Their endurance is getting better. But uh, there's no clinical studies looking at those yet. I don't know why. It seems like it'd be really easy to do photographs before and after, but nobody's done it yet. Uh, and my lab doesn't do that. I just do research, okay, and then license things to other companies to do all this kind of stuff. But yeah, but go ahead, back there. Uh, you mentioned about expertise as uh, something that protects telomeres. How about... Uh, I don't understand the question. You mentioned about exercise. Exercise. So, yes, okay. something that protects telomeres. Would you comment on any particular diet also that sort of influences uh, Okay, I'm, I didn't say that exercise affects telomerase. I said exercise actually reduces the rate of telomere shortening by the protection mechanisms I did. I will tell you about diet. <clears throat> okay, so Joe Perita yesterday talked about Okinawa. Uh, I recently was uh, requested by the, minister, the new minister of Okinawa, Aiko um, uh, Shima Jiri. Uh, she asked me to come and visit with her office, and she said that, you know, they used to have this reputation of having the longest living people, and now they're at the bottom of the list, okay? And their diet hasn't changed. So, so there's some real controversy. She, she asked me, if, what can they do to get themselves back on the top of the list, because they don't believe it's diet anymore. This is brand new stuff that just came out in the last few months. Okay, <clears throat> caloric restriction is another diet thing. Uh, that works great on mice, roundworms, fruit flies, and yeast, but it has terrible results on humans. Well, I've seen a lot of people get up and they tell how healthy they are, how great they are, how they have sex all the time, and stuff like that, and everybody in the audience is thinking, oh God, they look awful, you know? <laughs> and, and so caloric restriction is, there's no data showing that it works on humans. The primate study off the coast of Georgia that lasted 20 plus years, came up with absolutely nothing. Now they're trying to find anything to publish to actually show that caloric restriction had any beneficial as aspects to humans at all. That's because our telomere shortening is such a dominant part of our health that the other things that should affect our health actually don't show up. It's like sticks of dynamite burning inside of our cells. Diet is one, telomere length is one, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction are others. Telomeres have the shortest fuse. Okay, and that's the one in humans, whereas in mice, they have really long fuses for telomere biology. It's the other things that kill them off. I think there was, I don't know. Say it again? Turmeric, there's been a publication saying that turmeric actually inhibits telomerase, but it was actually a group of scientists that were, or people, not scientists I'd say, but a group of people that were actually trying to say that uh, uh, it will help cure your cancer by inhibiting telomerase. And it's actually non -re not reproducible by anybody. Turmeric has zero effect on telomere length so far. At least everything we've done, we can't find any benefit at all. I think I've got to go. <laughs> Who's the next speaker? Uh, PA65 cream. Have uh, I haven't used it. I, I'm not into skin creams myself, but I know a lot of people that are using it. Uh, I haven't seen any clinical studies from the cream yet. Um, but uh, I would imagine it works. There's... But as I said, the synthetic products are like 80 to 300 times more potent.